my project for the last few years has been the conversion of this Chinese milling machine. It's an Optimum uh, MH50G. It's like a 5600 kilogram class um, Chinese mill with a, with a BT40 taper. Pretty solid machine but just about the heaviest you can still get down into your basement. That's uh, essentially why I chose it over a used industrial machine. Um, as I said, I've been working on this CNC conversion for the last probably two, three years. I'm still like halfway, well, a bit more than halfway through, but I have at least another year or so to go. So like I'm really in the middle of this. Um, you see the Y axis has already been converted. This is my current project. It's the table of my milling machine. The top surface of this table has already been uh, scraped flat. So now it's on this granite plate upside down and I'm working on the horizontal sliding surfaces. So the next task for me is to get these um, horizontal surfaces parallel to, to the top side of the table or for that matter to the granite plate. Now with the milling table sitting on this um, granite surface plate uh, upside down it's really easy to measure the parallelity of the top side of the table to this horizontal sliding surface of the, of the dovetailway. So I use this um, one uh, micron indicator sitting on a, on a it's, it's not even cast, it's just a block of mild steel that's also scraped slightly hollow at the bottom so no matter where I press here, like the indicator doesn't move at all. So this sits nice and flat on the granite plate. Uh, I use this uh, gauge block here just to gap the um, irregularities of the that are like inherent um, to the to the scraped surface. Uh, so just to bridge that. And now what I can do is I can slide this you know, sideways, either way, this way or the other way and as you can see, like the indicator it, it hardly moves at all even though one, one uh, division is only one micron on this indicator but you see I can slide this, oh, well, back and forth there is, I do see a change of about probably like two micron but back and forth, everywhere where this surface has already been scraped. Oh, now I got off the gauge block. Like this doesn't move at all. That looks really nice. Um, even though this surface is far from finished. Now the reason that this surface is still far from finished is this corner here. You see this part here has never ever been scraped. Whereas the, the rest of the surface is, is fully scraped. Again it's more or less zeroed here where it's still scraped and you see what happens when I move on to the still machine surface. It's, oh, that, that was me. But, but here, here you're on zero and then it's like falling off a cliff. So down here in this extreme corner we're down at minus 18 micron it gets better towards the back. Here at the back, it, at the very back, you can't see it on the video, but in the very back here, below here, it's, it, it is scraped and that's, that's where it reads zero. But like as soon as I move a bit to the front here, it gets worse and worse and worse. So this, this corner here is super low compared to the, to the rest of the surface and that's why I have to keep uh, scraping on this till I get like another 20 or so micron off. Now I've applied a bit of blue to this straight edge or camelback which I now use to um, to mark the high spots on this on the surface that I'm scraping. So I just gently move it a little bit back and forth. It doesn't take much, just a little bit is really enough. And remove it. So this is what I got. Doesn't look too bad, but at this point I'm not very worried about 
the the bearing yet because anyway I still have to scrape down another 20 micron and the only thing I'm worried about this time is or at this point in the scraping process is that I don't dig a hole anywhere that's why I don't just blindly scrape down but the hole in this tool measures one times one inch and you can use this to judge the quality of, of your bearing generally the more points you see on this in, in, in a given area like this one square inch the better uh, the, the, the bearing of your surface as I said at this point I'm not really concerned about this I don't care at the moment if this is like 5 points or 10 points or 40 points but just you see probably around I don't know what's that 10 points 15 points which is more than enough really the only thing I worried or I'm concerned about at this point is that I don't have any areas where there are no blue points at all so I want, really want to avoid any low spots but otherwise I just want to get the surface down till it finally matches the height here good enough talking now let's do some scraping Okay, so I finished the rest of the surface off camera. Now I use the very same tool as before. It's hardened, it's made of hardened steel and it's not particularly sharp, but it has this edge here. And I can use this to deburr the part. So I just pull it over the surface once. And you see like a lot of the chips, not all of them, but a lot of the chips, they just easily come off. And you see when I not sure if you can see it on camera, but there's you do take quite a bit of material off, even though it's just scraping. Now, one thing I always do is I use a vacuum cleaner to get rid of all the chips. important to keep your workplace clean because when you're touching on the surface or measuring something you don't want any chips in the way. Then I just use some window cleaner to wipe off the rest of the blue. And once the blue is off I use a very fine stone to just remove any remaining burrs. It's a very fine stone so it, it, it doesn't really take any material off, it just deburrs and that's that's really really handy. So I don't have to worry about how much or how hard I rub this because it, it really is, it, it doesn't want to take anything off really. Good, that looks good, so we're ready for the next round. I did a total of four passes and you see the area here which is still only machined already got quite a bit smaller. I think the scraped surface stopped around here and now it, it comes up to here so probably got like one quarter or so smaller maybe even close to a third after four passes the blade already got somewhat dull so already I don't need to sharpen it again it's enough to just flip it around because it has another sharp edge still on the other side so that's quick um, by the way what I'm using here is a Biax I think it's a BL10 I think it's the it's the lightest power scraper that Biax builds it's it's pretty light like 2-3 kg so you can scrape for quite a while without getting overly tired 
so it's, it's really ideally suited for this kind of, of um, smaller or finer work. Um, the blade here, I think this is a 15 millimeter wide blade with a 20 millimeter radius, so there's quite it, it's quite curved, it's quite small radius, 20 millimeters. Um, and you see it's, it, it's a long blade. There's also short blades, but for finer work I prefer the long ones. They have a bit of flex and um, at least to me that feels more comfortable with like finer things. And also you have a bit more distance here so it's easier to get into dovetail ways and stuff like that. There's also considerably wider blades. This is uh, probably 25 millimeters wide. I don't think I ever used them that wide. I got this with a second-hand scraper that I once bought. And also this has a very very large radius, 140. It's probably the largest. Uh, again, I don't think I ever used such large radi radii. It's for if you really do large surfaces or so, that could be handy. This is my unfinished uh, slow grinder that I used to sharpen my um, scraping blades. At the moment it's really just a three-phase geared motor turning at around 280 rpm and attached to it I have this 3000 grit diamond wheel so it's, it's, it's fairly fine. Could even be a bit finer though. So when I... and at the moment really as I said it's it's unfinished at the moment it's, the moment is just clamped to the table and I put this sign table in front of it so I can adjust the angle it's currently set to minus five degrees which is about what I need for these plates so when I plug this in it allows me to So you see it doesn't take a lot of material up, so it, this gives me a lot of control over how I grind these uh, to a point. Yeah. That was already a bit much, but should be fine. Before I looked at the surface oh, in, in this corner over here, that has not yet been scraped and said probably like a quarter to a third um, of that area is gone. Now I can double check that by um, by measuring here. I haven't changed or adjusted anything on this indicator or stand so it should still read the same and it now in the spots where that read like minus five before it reads about minus six. So we've scraped about what six out of about 18 or 20 microns down so I think that one quarter to one third was a quite a, um, um, a reasonable estimate. That means this was four passes, so each pass took off something like one and a half micron. There's probably another ten or so passes till this unscraped area has completely disappeared. Um, will take a bit of time, but not too long. I'm not. I haven't checked before but it probably took me around one hour for four passes so another two hours and we should be good here and then we well I have, have a similar issue then on the on the other side but then we could move on and do um, a bit more of the finer scraping and really get the get the surface perfect but that's for uh, for another video I hope you like this one. If there's anything you would like to see or know more about, let me know in the comments and I hope you can answer those questions in a, in a, in a next video. Thanks for watching.